Hey, we're back. This is attorney Vince Davis. I'm with Cynthia Becker, and this is The Secret, How to Fight Child Protective Services and When. Let's take another call from Allie from Northern California. Allie, did you have a story to tell or a question to ask? Um, actually, I have a couple questions, if that's okay. Yeah, go ahead. Um, some paperwork and I've actually gotten transcripts from my court case and I can kind of I can not kind of I can actually prove um, that at the very first detention hearing um, I wasn't given any kind of notice of it until afterwards and when I went into the detention hearing my lawyer said just do whatever CPS says and we'll talk about it after at that hearing um, I have no drug history no police history nothing my lawyer said and on the transcript it says that she said I was aware that I needed to drug test for the county, but I was requesting placement of my son. At that point, everything went downhill. Um, they obtained an illegal drug test, um, and they coerced me, telling me, oh, you just take this, that's fine, we'll release your son to you. They didn't. It's been almost a year and a half now that my son's been in the custody of CPS. And I can prove also on the record that county council had lied. Um, and the judge obviously hadn't looked at his records um, because it, it was at the jurisdiction hearing. And she had done what was called uh, Rambo lawyering at me. And she said that I had purposely denied a court order to drug test. And once I had found out that this, this county was forging drug tests and not submitting them, I said no, no more. You know, I I was one of the victims to a drug test that they had lied about that was never actually even submitted into my record, and they had used that at the jurisdiction hearing. County counsel had said that I was I had denied a judge's order after that one um, to not take another drug test when the judge hadn't ordered me to take another drug test. He had stated on the record for the previous court date um, that he was he was going to honor my wishes and that I should just speak to my lawyer about it. Well, the county council's lie at the jurisdiction hearing um, was kind of what swayed the judge to keep my son in the system. I can prove both things on the record against my lawyer and against county council, and I'm, I'm not sure how to file those. I, I know I'm going to be filing a 388 because I do have new evidence to submit that I've asked from the very beginning for them to submit, and they haven't. Um, but I don't know how to go about filing a habeas corpus on my lawyer or if I need to file one on county council as well. I'm just, I, like, I've looked online and I can't find any kind of forms to help file that. Right. And I so, also, hold on a second. You, uh-huh. you, you're saying a lot and I want to address some of these things. Okay. There is not a form to file a habeas. Okay. okay. It's a little sophisticated, a little complicated. You're going to have to talk to an attorney to do that. All right? Okay. But let me tell you this. I just want to be honest with you. In these types Mm -hmm. of situations that you're bringing up, um, you know, it's the probabilities of success are not with you. Now, I'm not saying it's impossible, but, you know, the probabilities aren't with you. And I would would hate to see you spinning your wheels. Now, if you... If you talk to an attorney, an attorney will better explain it to you. We'll look at the facts, look at the evidence. You know, I was just talking to someone today who told me, oh, they had evidence. They had evidence to prove A, B, C. The problem is, is they had inadmissible evidence to prove A, B, C. All right? So when people tell me, oh, I got evidence to prove this, um, okay, is it admissible? Now, you can't answer that question because I would bet a dollar you didn't go to law school. Right. So you don't know anything about the evidence code. That's not a bad thing for you. I'm just, you know, if they ask me to change the transmission in my car, I couldn't do it. I don't have the knowledge, training, experience or tools. Right. And that's like you answering a question. Hey, is your evidence admissible? You don't know. And, it, you know, it's not it's not something that you can easily figure out. That's why you need to talk to an attorney. 
Now, if you don't like your court-appointed attorney, you've got to find somebody in your area that will be able to help you. Okay? okay. It, would, it, would it count or matter anything if I've, I filed um, right after the detention hearing um, for a Marsden hearing, and I was granted just an att- like attorney's advisor, and then she was dismissed, and I've still had the same lawyer for a year and a half. And through email and through the transcripts, I can show where she has blatantly refused to submit evidence, mm-hmm. and I lost my appeal based on that as well. Um, the the fifth district at the very beginning of it for my jurisdictional and my detention, um, my argument for the appeal, they affirmed it. Everything afterwards was because my lawyer hadn't submitted anything for my appeal, mm-hmm. like any of the evidence or anything. So they had to go and light with the, the department. Okay. And had it not been for IAC, I would have won my appeal because they affirmed everything else in my favor. Okay. So and, hold on. Hold on a second. Uh-huh. You, you're really going to have to sit down and talk with an attorney because it's not something, even if we had a couple of hours that I could walk you through over the phone. It's a little sophisticated, a little co- a little complicated. You actually have two different cases going on right now. You have yeah. the, you have this. Hey, I got screwed in in the first part of the case, which I call module one, and you should address that. I mean, if okay. half of what you're telling me is true, you should address it at some appellate level. But okay. but and here's the important part: your case has moved on to module two. All right, you okay. don't have time to waste. Just looking at module one, because if you don't get any appellate relief, you're going to let time go by in module two, and then it is going to be too late because you've been concentrating on something that was a loser. Okay, and how how long do I have after I, I lose an appeal um, to appeal that appeal? <laughs> I you know what I, I I'd have to look at the rule, but I think it's like thirty days. You can file oh, yeah, it. It said thirty or sixty, and I couldn't I couldn't distinguish which was which. You know, and that's something you should talk to an appeal. I mean, I talked to an appellate lawyer about if you had an appellate lawyer um, do your appeal, you can call them and say, hey, how long to take a writ to the Supreme Court of California? And they might say something like, well, 30 days, but I'm not doing that. But at least you know the time period and at least you or another attorney that you hire can can try to do it. I wouldn't try. Look, I wouldn't suggest that you try to file a a writ to the Supreme Court by yourself. You're going yeah. to need to ins- an expert appellate attorney to help you. Okay. 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 And um, just one more thing. Um, how could I, would I call the American Bar Association for the IAC? Would they be able to appoint me one since this judge wouldn't? And I know that's like a due process violation, but I mean, I can fight that after the fact. Just getting a lawyer before my time's up. Okay, um, so you have the wrong strategy altogether. Because okay. what you're telling me now is not correct. If you want to bring up IAC, you need to talk to your appellate attorney. And I think you would have had to have bring it up in your um, appeal. And, and if I you, don't think he actually mentioned that part. It was it was all they didn't have any grounds to detain my son. Because I, I was the non-offending parent at the, in, at the time of the detention. Okay, so listen, you got to, the bottom line is you got to talk to an attorney. Now, you just said something that made me think that uh, a writ of habeas might help you, um, you know, but you can't do it by yourself. You might okay. as well change the transmission in my car. You don't know how to do that either. So you need some expertise. Listen, okay, I- uh, Allie, I want to thank you for calling. Uh, thank you for listening. Update us in, uh, you know, three, four weeks on what's going on with your case. I'd really like to know. You have a very interesting case. If you want to talk to me about it more offline, you can call my office, 888-888-6582, and we can, you know, talk more about what's going on in your case. And, you know, maybe I can give you some advice or steer you you the right way. I tried uh, two weeks ago, and they said to make they would make an appointment for two days later because you weren't available. And then I never got another call. And in seven days, they're moving for the two six hearing. So, but you I'm, just I'm, had your disposition here. Look, call me no, tomorrow. I'm, call I'm me tomorrow and make an appointment, and I'll give you a call. All right, we've run out of time this evening. Two hours sure goes by fast when you're having fun. Um, this is the secret. How to fight child protective services and when 
uh, you can contact me at my office number, and you can also contact Cynthia Becker, my co-host, at uh, the Reality Series, CPS The Horror Stories, on Facebook and YouTube. We'll see you next week on the radio. Thank you.